Hello, everyone. Welcome to the part of the week where we get to read the YouTube comments. That's right. Uh, I, I, I'll once again say I made an oopsies last week with the uh, uploading of the Toxic Lorcana player video twice instead of a market watch on Wednesday. As you can see here, Amanda got baited. Yeah, it was a mistake. Yep, yeah, it definitely won't happen again. And we're going to move on from that. But anyway, what have been these comment videos? Leave a comment, you might get in there. There were a good few comments from the other video before I took it down, like this one uh, from Camille Boomer. He summarized well how I felt after the last tournament I attended and seeing the fights on the internet. It's my first CCG and this, this toxicity put me off. I'm still debating whether I will attend future events other than the league. And the toxicity on the front, I don't pick a side on this. Yeah, no, it is what it is. Uh, there is toxicity. Some people will argue that there's not as much. And, you know, we have comments like uh, this one from Schneider's Way. I've played in five events and all were awesome. Great players, great organizers. You're reporting on the few Reddit problems. Luckily, the actual events were great. This, again, we were not going to assume that all players and all events are always toxic at all times, right? Because that would be stupid and the game would fail. Rather, we have to talk about the bad examples because we live in a world where... Good things tend to go underappreciated, but bad things definitely uh, explode and get a lot of attention. And the reason for that is because people are interested in discovering bad things. Because if everything is running all good, status, flow, status quo, it's kind of boring, kind of mundane. Everything's operating as expected, not really a big deal. But when you see things not working the way they should, that's when people's brains get involved a little bit better. So, yeah. Recording on the few Reddit problems. Trust me, there are more than a few Reddit problems. But uh, I appreciate that this guy is having good experiences, and some people will never it will never be affected by this toxicity, and that's good. But some people will, and it's about navigating it and trying to reduce it so it doesn't ruin people's days. Uh, now, from malintent, the ink wall already removed his post. He got his story mixed up with someone else's. Very sad to see content creator attack players without verifying. That is that. That is sad. I'm nothing bad that. You know, us content creators are humans. We do make mistakes, right? I uploaded the same video twice last week, for instance. Funny mistake. Life happens. However, um, mistakes that actually hurt other people or cause distress to other people are not on the same level as, like, innocent random mistakes, right? Um, if we're going to be, you know attacking someone there has to be proof like there's gotta be i'm surprised that this content creator posted something without proof like that but you know it's probably a one-off that's never gonna happen again so we'll move on uh cars so cars of l gaming competitive game if you go to a tournament people who are good will win once we have worlds, should a person who wins it once never compete again? No, try as one as many as you can. That's true. I don't know what this comment is relating to, but it is true that um, you know people that are competitive will continue to be competitive and will not stop being competitive. And that's kind of how comp um, competitive scenes are born, just by more and more competitive players entering the game each and every year, really raising the cap, uh, the, the skill cap, I should say, of everyone there, making everyone better for it. Some people get weeded out because of that. That's okay, not a big deal. But for the people who thrive on that, it's a massive turn on, which is nice. Uh, Anthony Brisson. I heard a lot more positive comments from people who were their IRL. The internet is always like that, unfortunately. I would care if the IRL community was like that. And then someone responds, depends on where you are at IRL. Also, Texas is full of toxic players. I had an awful week playing some championships, and I'm going to take a long break from any sort of luck I'll play. Yeah, so like... The people who are toxic uh, on the internet tend to be toxic in person. Uh, I can relate this to dozens of examples in my personal um, career of even the last couple of years playing Digimon. I, I, it's true. It really is. Uh, some people hold themselves back in person because they want to be polite and that's fine. But like, you know, douchebags are everywhere is kind of the point. The whole point of the video was to just bring awareness of toxicity and to try to make people be better. That was all the video was intended to do. And I'll put it in twice. But that will not happen again. Kid Tokyo, you are the wolf of card Wall Street when it comes to my watch. Keep doing an amazing job. Well, thank you. 
I will. It's a very nice compliment. Uh, Nicholas Check. Great work and a quick few questions. Any notion of whether cold foils are equal to relative values of enchantment cards? Some go for quite a premium for turn and play alone. If Lokan refuses to print more, what in turn would be value indicate as a long-term investor? Uh, foils are always kind of wild cards in the sense that foils will always be worth more. Um, they don't follow the same line as the regular rarity of the cards or even enchanted rares to that thing. They are really wild. My recommendation is always to buy low foils in the low and sell in the high. I would not buy them TCG Player. I would buy them, you know, locally or in person for cheaper what TCG Player has, and then try to sell them or invest if you think it's going to be worth a lot. Like Fall Hill New World, for instance. That card blew up. Yeah. Uh, Enchanted Rares should be worth more than the foil in most cases. I think that'll be a trend we see as the game continues to evolve. But uh, yeah, long-term investor, uh, you know, again, for long-term investing... I'm not. I'm, the only things I'm long-term investing in this game are um, first chapter booster boxes, and the uh, the D100 promos, and um, well, the D100 sealed box thing, and the 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 23 Expo promos. That's all I'm hoarding, uh, and that's it. I'm not investing in anything else per se. Anything else I buy it will be for either for the immediate quick flip of the churn and burn of a of a business. Or for a short-term investment, with some maybe longer investments, like for example, Mickey Mouse Trumpeter, I keep buying those under two bucks when I see them, uh, and eventually they will go. I'm just sitting in a box right now. Hope that helps. Yeah. Um, thanks for answering so many clear questions. You're welcome, Samuel Bordeaux. I'm glad you enjoy it. Uh, six face, turn one little queen, turn two big queen, turn three aerial, turn four second card on the right. Bananas will be had. It is true. I had to look up what cards he was talking about in this sense. But yeah, uh, there will be bananas in set four. There's a lot of shenanigans. But that's just power creep in the way it is. Moogle. I appreciate you going through these cards. Just a note on 313. I thought the same thing about the combo of Mystical Rolls and Ember Beast. Ember Beast. How about those little yellow cards in the Inkland boosters say that moving damage is not the same as damage there, meaning that Rolls effect won't cost beast effect. That's unfortunate. Uh, I'm glad that someone commented that because I didn't catch that at all. Uh, very good to see, and really unfortunate it doesn't work that way, but I guess that means just one less shenanigan in the set to abuse. Finally, Mega, Mega C. Kaiser Brawls and Early Ruby answered all things like Singer Ariel, Ursula Deceiver of All, Haram. It hits something fairly key in old deck archetypes as an inkable. I could see it getting teched in. It's worth having to stop an Ursula double singing friends or sun and chill alone. I agree with that. I think it will see a little bit of play. What I really wanted this from this comment, though, was the response from Ben Larkin. Yep, card is quite strong, some odd takes in this video. Well, Ben Larkin, you're the idiot for not telling me what my odd takes are. If you think I have odd takes, explain what they are and why they're odd. Otherwise, I'll never know. Like with Mugo's comment, didn't even think about the moving damage versus damaging thing. You know, and I was corrected. If you're going to offer a comment like that, at least offer what the odd take is and why. So we can learn from it and move on. This guy is just a dumb keyboard warrior. And that that's an attack, but I, but it, there's proof. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye.